Last time uh, we looked at uh, transmitters and receivers, not just for radio links, also for other purposes, for wired communication, but the radio links are the most important and the most complex uh, transmitters and receivers because we have to spend a very large link, link loss in radio communication. Uh, today we are going uh, most of the discussion of last time was uh, around voice communication like voice broadcast especially voice broadcast but also voice communication between two uh, radio uh, couple of radio transmitter and radio receiver what we are going to uh, to do today is going uh, to look into more detail in uh, modulation formats and especially in numerical modulations since most of the our transmissions are m numerical or in other words digital but I prefer the word numerical here because it describes more accurately what is, accu what is being done uh, why numerical modulations? there are several different things if you want, if you want to transmit an analog signal there are several different uh, different reasons why I would prefer a numerical modulation for requests that do not have much to do with uh, uh, with the best radio link performance or the, or the best range but uh, they have to do with other user requirements so uh, uh, to see what a numerical radio link looks like it, it's also the same for a wire link not just a radio link so uh, we, the information we transmit is in a numerical form we have noise, we have interference and we have distortion of, over the transmission channel in all cases regardless whether we have a numerical transmission, uh, the transmission or we have an analog transmission but uh, many users require encryption encryption on the transmit side and uh, decryption on the receiving side starting for conventional mobile phones so even though our signal is analog we convert it into a numerical form just to be able to perform some sensible encryption some, some sen uh, uh, co the corresponding decry decryption on the receiving side because encryption in the analog world is difficult to do it's difficult to do some encryption on an analog channel uh, that the, as for instance, the voice signal is no longer readable or no longer understandable. We will can do the same thing very easy in the in the digital world in the, in the numerical world. Here. Uh, we may be able to do some useful compression to uh, reduce the amount of information we have to transmit over our lossy link. Uh, compression is not particularly efficient with voice signals but compression is very efficient in uh, for transmitting images especially television moving images uh, in, t in uh, transmitting moving images we have uh, in effect a three-dimensional compression one dimension is time and the other two dimensions are the dimensions of the image so with three dimensions compression may be very efficient uh, reducing the amount of data that needs to be transmitted over our difficult link here uh, from the uh, point of view of the link we need some channel coding to overcome the limitations of our transmitter and especially our receiver uh, especially the carrier recovery in the receiver this may require some particular channel coding and of course we can have to do the opposite channel decoding on the receiving side. Uh, what many people forget is that uh, any uh, link using some kind of uh, uh, modulation to do the demodulation efficiently we need a coherent transmission and uh, coherent modulation coherent, uh, coherent transmission so the transmission may remain the same but we need a coherent demodulator in the receiver to guess the best signal to noise ratio or in the numerical word we call this the bit error rate to get the best possible bit error rate we need to perform a carrier recovery and this carrier recovery has several requirements uh, 
both on the transmitter, on the transmission channel, we have to know the transmission channel and on the design of the receiver and especially on the accuracy of the various frequency sources here. Uh, also what we have to think about in the transmitter, we have to think about the efficiency of our power amplifier in the transmitter. Uh, uh, this efficiency is important uh, as soon as we get to battery power transmitters, not just battery power transmitters, but also other transmitters, uh, we request to have a sensible efficiency here of the power amplifier. And using unsuitable modulation schemes here, we may get very poor, may can come down to very poor efficiencies of the uh, transmitter output stage, and that's not good for us. Maybe it's somewhat easier to deal with the noise temperature of the receiver here, electronics, is very good now today electronics provides a much lower noise temperature of the receiver than we receive noise from the actual link especially if this is a terrestrial radio link with uh, at room temperature so uh, all the background of the transmitter is radiating at 290 kelvin these are uh, the this is the frame we have to work with the frame of requests we have to work both with the transmitter and both in the and the receiver if we are going now to look at the history of how things are happening, uh, the first, uh, uh, well, the first uh, numerical transmissions were really Morse code uh, uh, with uh, Morse code transmission, Morse code reception. So we simply turned the transmitter on and off. It was on-off keying of the transmitter. Uh, no one really cared here about the bandwidth used. Uh, the transmission speed was dictated by the uh, human receiver, the human ear receiver. But this same uh, idea was used further on for many, many, many years. Almost uh, all the first half of the 20th century were, if we ever had a numerical transmission, it was also a modulator, a, mod a modem, and uh, the corresponding demodulator uh, included in the uh, modem on the receiving side. And then we have a radio link designed for analog transmission. Either this was voice transmission, AM or FM or pulse, or, uh, or what was pulse transmission, which is easy, simple to make. We had many different possible modulations, like amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, Audio amplitude shift king, audio frequency shift king, if just we generated here uh, in the modulator an audio signal that had the king and then we transmitted this over an analog radio link. Uh, we, with pulse modulation we had a pulse amplitude modulation and pulse position modulation. This was uh, were also very popular in uh, uh, history. So uh, all these uh, modems, modem kind modem radio links had several key issues in common. All used a very large uh, bandwidth on the radio link. On the radio side, this was much larger than the capacity, several orders of magnitude larger than the capacity of uh, the data to be transmitted. Uh, correspondingly, the spec uh, spectral efficiency was very poor. It was much less than one bit per second per hertz, so this per second per hertz cancels out, so we are left with one bit, the unit for spectral efficiency. Uh, the receiver was usually incoherent, non-coherent, non-coherent receiver just for simplicity of its design. It was actually a, a voice receiver and then coupled to a modem, but the voice receiver didn't know anything about the data being transmitted over the radio link. In total, the performance was between 20 dB and 50 dB worse than the Shannon's limit, than the Shannon's theorem. So this is very bad, this is very inefficient. But uh, on the other hand, we had simple transmitters and receivers, mainly already existing transmitters and receivers, so we need not redesign the transmitter and the receiver. That was the main issue for using modems, to avoiding redesigning uh, known receiver and known receiver and transmitter uh, schematics so to use the same uh, circuits also for numerical transmission and a side advantage especially go going to very high frequencies carrier frequencies uh, this uh, modulation scheme was quite insensitive to the frequency errors of both the transmitter and the receiver <coughs> 
so was very insensitive and this is particularly true if we go to optics uh, if you just think about uh, a remote control for uh, for uh, for uh, television receiver nowadays an infrared remote control uh, the infrared remote control has has perhaps one kilobit uh, uh, per second of uh, information rate but the bandwidth the uh, free space bandwidth of the infrared uh, radio link is several tens of terahertz so here we have uh, tens of uh, at least 10 orders of magnitude larger bandwidth than we have capacity of an infrared remote control this is maybe the most uh, most uh, well known and most extreme case of uh, using uh, transmitters and receivers that uh, were not designed per designed particularly for our link uh, I, c I could call all these uh, links historical patching since uh, we already had a use uh, working link and we just patched some uh, some modems, some modulators and demodulators on an existing analog link. This was not very clever to do. So we, we are trying to do now things better, especially if we look at uh, our design here. Uh, on our transmission channel we may be limited with, with the signal to noise ratio. But we would prefer to have a better signal to noise ratio on, on, an, uh, on our analog data. We already saw something last time on the last lecture on receivers and transmitter. Frequency modulation can do exactly that. Can uh, frequency modulation can trade bandwidth for signal to noise ratio or vice versa, signal to noise ratio uh, for bandwidth. So uh, with um, frequency modulation with uh, some processing in the receiver, that's the limiter inside the receiver, we can improve the signal to noise ratio at the cost of the wider bandwidth in the transmitter. Uh, we are going to try to do the same using numerical transmissions over our link so maybe doing better compression maybe doing better channel encoding and decoding uh, uh, to have a much better signal to noise ratio on our analog signal that is being transmitted on our analog data that's further converted to numerical format compressed encrypted and channel coding so what uh, are we going to do what we do better in the transmission side not to use these historical modems uh, the best thing is to do to look at the signal itself so signal itself uh, signals themselves are always narrowband signal even if we look at radio or at optics uh, our signal is just uh, a phaser and uh, this signal is rather narrow band. If the signal is narrow band, then uh, the phaser representation comes very handy in here. And this phaser representation may work as well in, in radio as well as in optics. Uh, with a numerical transmission, we have to transmit a number of different symbols. Each symbol is assigned in a narrow band. Uh, with a narrow band uh, signal, each signal is assigned a phaser. A phaser uh, includes a magnitude and uh, the phase angle so selecting many phasers we can get many different symbols we usually do this, uh, this alphabet of symbols is usually called the modulation constellation how uh, drawing on the complex plane i and q are real and imaginary of this phaser here drawing up here the different uh, different symbols as phasers what we are limited with, we are limited with the maximum transmit power, transmitter power. This is certainly, certainly a limit here of our hardware, the maximum power we can get out of here. Uh, but we can transmit at a lower power. For instance, here the phasers seven or two are transmitted at much lower power than the phasers three and one. So this is a circle, and all the all the constellation has to be included inside this circle of the maximum power. Uh, uh, our uh, spectral efficiency if we are switching from one phaser to another phaser uh, for the next symbol to be transmitted our spectral efficiency depends on the number of symbols we selected the more symbols we have the more phasers we have the more information we can transmit in a single symbol 
for the same for the same given bandwidth so uh, c over b capacity uh, spectral efficiency here capacity over bandwidth is uh, dependent on the size of our, our alphabet this is m m is the number of the symbols here m in this uh, in this example m is equal to 10 just uh, i do not mean that 10 is a particularly useful choice but this is just to give you an, an example of the constellation constellations nowadays may go up to up to and beyond probably 4000 different symbols for some kind but uh, the larger the number of symbols we get a better uh, spectral efficiency but the larger the number of symbols the more are we sensitive to noise interference and distortion noise interference and distortion on the receiving side they will actually uh, broaden the tip of our phaser up to a whole circle and this circle the radius of this circle is uh, is proportional to the square root of the noise power or inter plus interference power plus distortion power so if we increase the size of the alphabet too much or if we get too much noise or interference on distortion of uh, or, or or distortion or interference or noise on our radio links then these circles may overlap when these circles these noise circles overlap then we have transmission errors we can no longer decide to which uh, a a particular received phaser to which symbol does it correspond when, when we cannot do this then we generate errors so uh, the modulation constellation is something very simple to understand and also is displayed by different instruments showing the modulation constellation of a particular modulation let's see what we can do starting right with very simple example like by phase shift keying by phase shift keying uh, has in the complex plane has just two phasers 0 and 1 they are both of the same magnitude but they are of the opposite phase that's the reason why by phase shift keying uh, by phase shift keying is the most is the simplest possible modulation and what we have here this is symmetrical uh, by phase shift keying with no residual carrier there are by phase shift keying uh, there are variants that have do have a residual carrier but for the uh, highest possible efficiency we prefer to have no residual carrier at all so if the uh, average number of zeros equal the equals the average number of ones there is no residual carrier here if these are of equal mag uh, uh, these two phasers are of equal magnitude and opposite phase we have nothing happening in the complex plane here in the in the imaginary axis on the imaginary axis in the complex plane there is nothing happening here and encoding is very simple we just need a multiplier inside the transmitter to flip the phase of our carrier oscillator uh, we may have some filtering to shape somewhat our spectrum but uh, the simplest solution here is to have no filter at all and have a class C amplifier with an excellent efficiency so the efficiency of a biphase shift keying transmitter is excellent and on the receiving side also this complex operation that we talked about the carrier recovery here it's quite simple with the biphase uh, shift keying we just uh, need to perform the square of our input signal and this square uh, uh, includes uh, twice the actual carrier frequency twice the actual carrier frequency and we have to divide this down by a divider to an actual carrier frequency and multiply this with our signal back uh, to have coherent demodulation of this signal here there is also a hidden uh, hidden problem here this frequency divider uh, for a division number of two division ratio of two has two possible out output phases because it can start from two different uh, positions this flip-flop can start from two different positions so uh, we have an ambiguity of the phase here this ambiguity of the phase is actually handled in the channel coding here we should perform such ch channel coding and say to resolve the ambiguity of the carrier phase uh, the simplest channel coding is differential coding so we encode just uh, uh, with one level with this one one of the logical levels will encode a constant uh, 
signal and a flip of the signal is encoded a flip and sig uh, flip in the polarity of the signal is encoded by the other level so uh, in this way we can remove the uh, remove the ambiguity here but uh, this ambiguity gets removed with a cost uh, the bit error rate actually doubles so it's not not all that simple also another requirement of the carrier recovery is that uh, the offset of the two frequencies the transmitter frequency and the receiver frequencies the offset of the two frequencies has to be very narrow usually less than 10% of the capacity or uh, symbol rate of these links. Uh, if it's more than 10%, we have difficult difficulties in recovering the carrier here. So we should keep our frequencies very accurate here. And this is especially pro a problem at high carrier frequencies and low data rates. Then we, it's, it's difficult to keep uh, the frequency of the transmitter and the frequency of the receiver uh, sufficiently stable. With such a simple modulation, with everything happening on the real axis, with no no signals going, no no phaser going into the ima uh, uh, along the imaginary axis, we get to mirror identical sidebands. So each sideband on its own is able to transmit the whole information. Uh, the other sideband is just a mirror replica of this sideband. So this uh, biphase shift keying is not particularly effi spectrum efficient. Uh, it is uh, very well noise tolerant, but spectrum efficiency here is poor, be is not the optimum because we have two mirror identical sidebands if we look at the spectrum. So biphase shift key keying may be simple, but it's not particularly spectrum efficient. Uh, a much better efficiency is obtained by using quadriphase shift keying. So having four phasers transmitting each uh, symbol here is transmitting two bits of information two bits of information per signal uh, so the transmitter now includes two modulators operating in quadrature to be able to obtain this kind of constellation here out of our uh, numerical input signal uh, again we have uh, if we have no particular filtering here we can operate our power amplifier of our transmitter in class C with a very good efficiency so the efficiency stays the same uh, but the side bands are now independent so the upper side bands contains different information from the lower side band so we have get uh, twice the spectrum efficiency here of the previous case of the BPSK transmitter now we get uh, twice the efficiency uh, also, the design both for BPSK and uh, QPSK is very simple because the signals are limited at the output of the receiver. We have a limiter here, so we need not an automatic gain control. AGC is unnecessary in this for these modulations. The carrier recovery here is a little bit more complex. Uh, in the simplest fashion, here we have to uh, get the fourth power of the immediate signal uh, and divide the frequency by four to explain the operation of this carrier recovery here in in simple words uh, so it's a bit a little bit more complex the carrier recovery also more sensitive for errors but as long as the uh, transmitter and receiver frequencies are less than 10 percent of the capacity then we can perhaps live with uh, with, with this uh, demodulation scheme. Uh, this is in fact a QAM transmission here and here. Quadriphase uh, amplitude modulation, but it's called quadriphase shift keying because all the phasers are of the same length. All the phasers have the same magnitude here. Uh, the advantage is we get twice the spectral efficiency of BPSK. Uh, of course, we can go further on and increase, uh, well, uh, something uh, to tell it immediately, uh, how about the sensitivity to, sensitivity to noise here, so our circles here. Of course, as, uh, QPSK has four phasers, they are spaced at a closer distance than the BPSK phasers. So here the radius of the noise circle has to be narrower. The noise circles has to be made smaller to avoid errors in this transmission. But 
we are in transmitting twice the amount of information with the same number of symbols so if we get to the twice the power of the transmitter then we are at the same so quadriphase shift key in and biphase shift key in have the same sensitivity to noise both have the same sensitivity because uh, here we have to since we have less symbol less uh, bits per symbol uh, we have to increase the data rate and that requires a higher transmitter power or in other words here with more symbols per symbols we also have to increase the transmitter power by a factor of two to have the same sensitivity to noise so they are in fact quite identical bpsk and qpsk are quite uh, equivalent as regarding to noise sensitivity the advantage of uh, quadriphase shift keying is better spectral efficiency at the expense of a more compli complex carrier recovery and also more sensitivity to, to noise disrupting the carrier recovery uh, of course if we want better spectral efficiencies we have to go to multi-level uh, in fact uh, this uh, by phase shift keying this is two level modulation we could also call a two level modulation quadriphase shift keying because quadriphase shift keying is just uh, the sum of two totally independent by by phase bpsk signals so this uh, though we have four phasers here four symbols this is uh, still remains a two level modulation here two level modulation that uh, allows a class c amplifier but if we want to go to better spectral efficiencies we have to go to multi-level modulations uh, like using a true quadrat quadrature amplitude modulations with many symbols for instance here I have the example of 64 QAM with 64 different symbols of course uh, if the phasers are now spaced uh, at smaller distances uh, the radius of the circles of noise have been, has to be much smaller so 64 QAM is much more sensitive to noise uh, than QPSK uh, but the general diagram of the transmitter and of the receiver stays the same uh, except that we do not have just a driver uh, bipolar driver here we need a DAC converter in the transmitter and we need an ADC converter not just a limiter in the receiver as, go, as soon as we go to multi-level uh, QAM we uh, need AGC in the receiver so now the receiver has to be the transmitter has to be perfectly linear the receiver has to be perfectly linear so uh, in the transmitter uh, now the efficiency drops in class for a class A amplifier perhaps to 15% here from the 70% of the uh, QPSK so uh, don't forget this drop in the transmitter efficiency the spectrum is the s similar to QPSK same picture for QPSK as for QAM so we have independent sideband here sideband here sidebands here so we make the best possible use of the spectrum the carrier recovery may become very very complex here we may we, we may need synchronization symbols in our uh, transmission here so introduce some overhead for simple synchronization symbols to be able to perform the carrier recovery uh, recovery on those synchronization symbols uh, to have this carrier recovery actually working inside the receiver uh, quadrature amplitude modulation especially if the number here is large not 64 maybe 256 maybe 1024 maybe even 4096 different symbols this is limited to point to point microwave links with very good signal to noise ratios that have that have very very little noise on each phasers here very small circles around here very small noise circles uh, of course such a transmission is also very sensitive to multipath multipath the reflections in multipath uh, because reflections may cause intersymbol interference may cause transmission errors here uh, that's the reason why it's limited to point to point to point, to point microwave links because in point to point microwave links we have highly directional antennas and those highly dire directional antennas actually remove reflected waves so that's the reason why we need good antennas like in quite, quite similar here really to analog television analog television was also very sensitive to uh, to multipath generating ghost images but here we generate errors in our transmission data 
Of course, this square scheme of selecting the phasers may not be uh, the most uh, suitable one for our transmission and we have other solutions also applicable to this uh, to the selection of the alphabet selection of the constellation of our modulation to make best use both of the spectrum and of the efficiency of our power amplifier inside the transmitter and uh, these selections are in fact used in practice so in GSM Edge, that's an improved G version of GSM, we have the 8 PSK modulation. Here, here all the symbols still have the same amplitude, the same magnitude, all the phasers have the same magnitude, but we can transmit 3 bits per symbol. So that's al already an advantage over the 2 bits per symbol of QPSK. With 8 PSK it still makes sense to arrange all the phasers on the on a circle so to have the same power to keep the transmitter simple with the class C amplifier in the transmitter. So this is used for mobile phones. Uh, uh, other constellations quite special are used in some also in some mobile phones. This was uh, <coughs> DMPS uh, in uh, the United States and now it's found in Tetra is the Pi over 4 QPSK. This is a special kind of QSP, QPSK where uh, uh, even symbols look different from odd symbols. We have uh, the red symbols here are even symbols and the blue symbols are odd symbols. What is the advantage of P, P, P over 4 QPSK? Uh, it has the same spectral efficiency as the QPSK as yes, conventional QPSK, so there is no, uh, uh, per, no certainly no advantage to be visible here. But if we have uh, our QPSK transmission filtered, so if we filter here the data to uh, reduce the side lobes of the spectrum and to have a narrower spectrum, we still have the main lobes, but we reduce the side lobes with the filtering. We have to have a linear power amplifier. This has poor efficiency. Now, how to improve the efficiency? We cannot, may, may not use class C. We should have used class B if we use the whole plane, the whole plane. But uh, there is an intermediate solution using a class B amplifier. A class B amplifier actually, a class B amplifier here actually uh, produces little distortion at high power levels. But the class B amplifier produces lots of distortion at very low signal levels. So with the class B amplifier we have a maximum power and the minimum power and only in this range in between here a class B amplifier operates correctly. So this uh, particular modulation P4 QPSK is intended to be used with class B amplifiers. So the class B amplifier is a real uh, reason why this P over 4 QPSK is being used. So to avoid this central region here, because the transition from an uh, even signal to an odd signal, from an odd signal to an even signal, signal always avoids this uh, minimum power circle here. So we avoid the area where the class B amplifier uh, has high distortion. We will see more this, uh, about this in the next lecture about intermodulation distortion uh, next week. So this week is just an explanation why this strange modulation here. We may use other modulations also on satellites because on space satellites power is very precious. We get power from the solar cells and the solar cells dictate the size and weight, mass and weight of a satellite, so the cost of the satellite. So we are trying to make the best use of our transmitter power. So with uh, Q 16 QAM you may see that with 16 QAM it has the blue circles here, the constellation of 16 QAM, plus these four circles here. These four circles here are also oh, 16 QAM. This does not make best use because we are not using a particular area. It's these two four uh, phasers here that actually dictate the radius of the mac P maximum, the maximum power circle. So we can arrange the constellation in a slightly different way, put the 
outermost uh, 12 uh, outermost 12 phasers on the outermost circle on the p maximum and then uh, in order to keep the same distance the same uh, uh, noise distance here between two symbols we can also rearrange the innermost four symbols to make better use of the satellite transmitter power so the red uh, dots here the red constellation makes a much better use of the transmitter than the blue constellation than uh, simple 16 QAM and this is used in satellite TV also in satellite TV we may, we may do something similar for 32 APSK this is called uh, to make best use uh, of the available area the, of the available circle of our transmitter power to arrange 32 phasers in the constellation in the most efficient constellation we can do it and having the largest distance between two, uh, two adjacent symbols uh, so this is done with satellites to conserve the power of the transmitter, make the best use of the transmitter power. Uh, what does the spectrum look like if we look back at the PSK or QAM spectrum shaping? If we do no spectrum shaping at all, say if we use a class C power amplifier and we use no filtering here, then the spectrum, each side of the spectrum is sine x over x. So the first side lobe is just 13 dB down and this side lobes of the spectrum decayed very slowly. 6 dB per octave or 12 d 20 dB per decade. This is very slow decay. Of course, if we do perfect uh, Nyquist filtering here, we can shrink the spectrum just to half of the main lobe here but at a very poor power amplifier efficiency. So now is the question the issue is, is what is more, more uh, important for us are having a good uh, power efficiency of the power amplifier and head of a broad spectrum or have a good spectrum efficiency having a very poor power efficiency depending on how much filtering we decide to do here. Of course, there's this subtle difference, subtle difference between BPSK and QPSK. This is easy to understand because QPSK, each symbol, this is the rate of the symbols, carries twice the amount of information corresponding to BPSK. And the symbol rate is actually what defines the spectrum here. Only with BPSK we have mirror-shaped spectrum, which for interference is not a, not a particular advantage. Uh, because the interference happens just on one side so it doesn't matter whether, whether we have a symmetrical spectrum or we have independent side beds. Uh, we, we, we are trying to keep this as down as much as possible so without filtering uh, QPSK or BPSK or QAM transmission is only useful for uh, the longest link in space where we don't really care about the spectrum efficiency we only care about the, the power efficiency for interplanetary missions of spacecraft. We can do uh, slightly better controlling the transition from one symbol to another symbol. So this is a, actually a special case of QPSK. We have four symbols here with four, just four stars in our constellation, four phasers in our constellation. But we only allow transitions between neighboring symbols and uh, this transition, we make this transition not uh, in the shortest possible amount of time, we, but we carefully control the time. So in one bit period, we just do one whole transition. We make the transition as slow as possible. And this is actually uh, transforms our phase modulation into frequency modulation. If the frequency is larger or smaller than one fourth of the rate of the symbol rate here. So this is called minimum shift keying. It's the most efficient way of frequency shift keying. And it's being used. Uh, so a logical one may be increase of the frequency by R over 4 and the logical 0 may be decrease of the frequency of R over 4. But the final constellation, we come back to the QPSK without uh, changing the magnitude. You see that these uh, transitions between neighboring symbols are this transition go with the constant power. So uh, the minimum shift keying modulation uh, 
uh, uses a transmitter with a constant power so we may have with minimum shift keying we may have uh, this is equivalent to QPSK at 70% efficiency of uh, the uh, class C output stage so minimum shift keying can work with a class C amplifier here uh, here sorry here. so we may have a class C with a constant envelope we may use a class C very efficient class C amplifier and that's the advantage of MSK we may do some further filtering on the way this transition occurs so uh, to change the uh, as we are doing the transmission to change the speed we are moving uh, around the circle here and this is called Gaussian medium minimum shift keying Gaussian minimum shift keying may further reduce the side lobes even with unfiltered minimum shift keying the side lobes decay as minus 12, 12 dB per octave or minus 40 dB per decade so we have much less uh, side uh, un unwanted side lobes of the modulation than we have here here we have strong modulation side lobes here we have much weaker modulation side lobes but with the uh, Gaussian frequency shaping uh, Gaussian uh, filtering filtering of this frequency modulating signal we can further reduce these side lobes and that's the reason why GS GM GMSK is m quite popular today with many simple communications ranging from wireless phones like DECT up to GSM but uh, we have to be careful because there are two quite different variants of GMSK and people usually don't understand this uh, and we may have a non-coherent GMSK with this where this frequency shift is just approximately plus minus 4 uh, R over 4 or we may have an exact uh, GMSK when this is exactly we get exactly we get exactly to this symbol if this the uh, the this uh, constellation is fixed and no exactly we may perform coherent demodulation and that's very efficient much more efficient than a non-coherent modulation when this is just approximately 90 degree here or 90 degree here it may be also some other value close to this value uh, but this uh, non-coherent GMSK may be used in some simple simple communications like uh, like decked phones or Bluetooth uh, communication while for uh, demanding communications like the GMSM phone uh, then we use coherent GMSK with coherent demodulation because we gain uh, coherent demodulation gains at least 3 dB inside the demodulator compared to the non-coherent case so this is just about our clean radio link and we were just here considering just the efficiency of our transmitter and the spectrum so these were our first two uh, questions were uh, uh, modulation constellation spectrum of the signal spectrum and the uh, uh, spectrum efficiency of the power out output power stage and efficiency of the spectrum but in a real radio link we have other problems we have multi-path we have multi-path uh, on our transmit path we have a di we may have a direct ray, even the direct ray may be absent but we have many reflections from many different obstacles and this all all of this summed together they actually corrupt our signal uh, because of the delays of the reflected wave waves they may cause intersymbol interference and now this was for a long uh, for many many years this was a question how to solve this thing the first solution was already attempted with, with analog televisions having an, uh, such an adaptive filter for analog TV but uh, this was not practically done with analog TV because it requires complicated integrated circuits it was only down with GSM and with G even with GSM this filter is limited the delays here are limited to four bits in our transmission of four symbols four GMSK symbols now what we are trying to do we are trying to replay uh, to compensate the uh, transfer function g of omega of our transmit channel with the opposite function of this uh, filter in the receiver uh, you may see that uh, if uh, 
the direct ray comes here first, then it's delayed exactly by delta T1 of the first reflection, and it's multiplied by minus gamma T1. So uh, this uh, term here exactly cancels out this term here. And this term here exactly cancels out this term delta T2 here, and so on. So um, this filter could, uh, could at least in theory, it could uh, uh, correct the signal perfectly. And this was the first solution that was attempted uh, 30 or 40 years ago, 40 years ago with experiments for analog TV, 30 years ago for the GSM phone. Now, uh, there are also problems. This has to be an adaptive filter because the GSM phone is moving, it's a mobile phone, and uh, these coefficients need to be adjusted all of the time on, a training sig on the training sequence of the GSM signal. Uh, so this is not simple to be done. This has to be adjusted. So we have to. We need a training signal inside the GSM signal to actually adjust this filter. Further on, uh, this uh, we may get points where we require quite a high gain because there's a deep fade uh, in the frequency response of our channel. Then we have a. We need quite a large increase of gain here to correct for this, but this large increase of gain actually causes a degradation of the signal-to-noise ratio, because if we amplify this part of the spectrum too much, also the noise present in this part of the spectrum will be amplified much. So there is a problem, and the extreme case is the stability problem. So this may go down to zero, this may go down, down up to infinity, and then our infinite impulse response filter and this uh, equalizing filter here is an infinite response, response filter may become unstable. So this was not the best solution. But it was used in GSM and imp it improved quite much the operation of GSM. But it was not the best uh, possible solution. Another uh, solution came out from the military. And this was spread spectrum. Spread spectrum was invented already in the Second World War not by particularly technical people and uh, in fact spread spectrum was uh, uh, first intended to avoid eavesdropping for the military but uh, a side advantage of spread spectrum is that the uh, spreading sequence that is much has a much wider bandwidth than our useful signal uh, has to be perfectly synchronized in the receiver if this synchronization if this synchronization is not known to our enemy then he cannot listen to our signal because he cannot synchronize onto our signal if this uh, if, if this uh, receiving generator sequence generator spreading sequence generator be uh, be uh, spreading or be radio virtually this is b over the, over the radio link bandwidth of the radio link if these two are not perfectly synchronized uh, all our signal is further spread it out to twice the bandwidth. So provided we have good synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver, working synchronization, the real signal, the bandwidth after uh, this spreading here, the real signal, the bandwidth shrinks back to the uh, user bandwidth. And with the bandpass filter here, we, with the B user, we can remove all other signals and we are just left with the signal over B user. On the other hand, we have, have interference from other stations or if we have uh, our same signal but delayed due to, say, the, the reflections are delayed. And if this reflection delay is large enough, then uh, our reflection actually the signal uh, does not the bandwidth does not shrink but the, the reflection is handled exactly in the same way as interference its uh, radio frequency spectrum doubles so its uh, spectral density here is very low and when we filter out here with a narrow band filter this interference becomes very very weak the interference or uh, or multipath distortion here so spread spectrum transmission was actually able to cope with multipath in a much simpler way than uh, an equ equalizing filter is able to do it without the drawbacks of the equalizing filter but uh, with the price of using a much broader frequency spectrum 
So this use of a much broader frequency spectrum was par partial in part countered by using code division multiple access. So we could use the same spectrum that's much broader than the B user, but we could use it for different users using different codes or using codes that are not synchronized to our transmission. So uh, here we had uh, uh, this case when we could actually use the broader spectrum for uh, multiple access to uh, make some use of this very broad spectrum also for other users to improve somewhat the spectrum efficiency here. Uh, in order to be able to do this we have to carefully control the transmitter power of all transmitters because if we want this process here uh, of spectrum shrinking or spectrum broadening in the receiver to actually uh, give a useful signal to signal to interference ratio inside the receiver then all the transmitters need to use the same power the same power at the receiving end so we have to adjust carefully adjust the powers of all transmitters involved here so it is not that simple even spread spectrum has its own requirement it needs a precise synchronization it needs a precise uh, transmitter power adjustment so it's not uh, as simple as it looks on the first glance, but still it's easier to implement than the equalizing filter. So spread spectrum was used in the CDMA phones, uh, in the CDMA phones around the year 2000. CDMA is now, now no longer being used. Why? Because even if we have CDMA, we still uh, stay with the poor spectrum efficiency here. So it's not as good as we could do it using some other means of communication, some other modulation. And we are going to look into detail at newer kinds of modulation uh, in the next hour today. So we make a break right now and we are going to do look at different modulation formats uh, next hour.